The Metropolitan Jazz Octet put a new spin on some of Dave Bowie's classic songs, Let's Dance, uh -huh. Space Oddity, and Changes. And here with more on how this all came together, Metropolitan Jazz Octet co-founder Jim Galaretto and jazz vocalist Paul Marnaro. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh my goodness, so David Bowie, jazz, how did yeah. this come together? This is incredible. Well, it started way back uh, in 2000, well, it started in 1959. Mm -hmm. the, the original group was started by my, one of my teachers and mentor, Tom Hilliard. And he did a record back then uh, dedicated to uh, trumpet player Bix Beiderbecke. Anyway, when Tom left this planet, he mm -hmm. gave me his music and we started oh. to continue his journey. And uh, before we started to work with Paul, we did some work with uh, D. Alexander on a Billie Holiday record, mm -hmm. which came out on Delmark. And as the group evolved, we, we, we wanted to work with Paul. And the David Bowie thing kind of came out of just yeah. our collaboration. So. Was David Bowie a big jazz fan? He was, personally, okay. uh, but uh, you know his music, he's considered rock. Uh, mm -hmm. He kind of defines genre, yeah, yeah, uh, yes. and he had so many different elements into it. But Boundary right, breaker. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So right around the time we decided to work together, um, I had been delving into trying to tap into a few of his songs for, for another album that I made. Mm -hmm. um, so I had had the idea that I think this might work, uh, but we were both a little tentative about it. We didn't want to, you know, impersonate or imitate sure. in any way and just uh, recreate the whole thing. Well, I mean, Jim and Paul, you can both an answer this musically and then vocally. Like, I mean, these are very famous yeah. songs. Like, how do you approach, like, <laughs> even, you know, rearranging or, like, putting your own spin on it? Very carefully. Very <laughs> carefully. That's exactly what I was going to say. And we didn't do it all in one setting. This kind of evolved through the pandemic. We sort of started it before the pandemic, and, and we through the pandemic, we, we, we managed to kind of come to the conclusions about what we thought would work. And, uh, you know, we didn't want to avoid things that were famous just because they were famous. Right, but yeah. we also, you know, Paul suggested some very deep cuts too that we yeah. would have. Well, and I, I would imagine you're getting in another generation of music fans who may not be super mm. familiar with jazz. True. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, young and, people, and our, much younger. And our <laughs> typical fans would not be typically Bowie, uh, Bowie yeah. fans. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and as a vocalist, I always connect to the story of whatever, mm -hmm. uh, if it's Rogers and Hart, if it's, you know, Johnny Mercer, Gershwin, whoever, it's, it's I interpret based on what the story is. And I tried to turn off all of my knowledge of Bowie, this superstar icon, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just focus on the stories and the songs, you know? So it's these, my perspective and, and theirs was, you know, focusing on David Bowie as a composer, mm -hmm. uh, kind of stripping away. Uh, we will not be costumed. I was going to ask you if you were going to wear the costume. costume. <laughs> no, Ziggy Stardust! <laughs> next one, next, next one. one. Okay. We're going to slowly inch into that. That's yeah. a much bigger budget. So. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. I mean, what's the response you've gotten so far? It's been fascinating. Actually, yeah. it's quite good. We we did some, we did, some, did sh a couple shows in April and sold out the house, and I think it was because of name recognition that yeah. it was Bowie and the fact that Paul has a following that wanted to see what he was going to do with the Bowie. I think they were surprised, you know. So it, it was definitely uh, curious at yeah, first, sure. uh, and then it's it's interesting because people were very uh, kind of stock still in the audience. So I thought. You know, in a typical show, I would say, well, let's throw in something upbeat or let's throw this in. But this is a very set program of music. But afterward, people were just effusive in their, mm. in their compliments. So I think it's, it's, it's finding its mark. It's, it's really it's interesting. In part to Paul's, you know, t telling of Bowie. There's a lot of, uh, you know, recounting of where Bowie was in his career, what the albums were about, what the lyrics you know, yeah. communicate, and so there's a lot of that in the show. It's very fascinating. But then you have to have a good following. I mean, the band started in the 1950s, restarted, what, in 2014? Exactly. Okay, yes. so I mean, like, there's the name is there, yes. so then you're, you're attached to another name of Bowie, and it's just a whole new generation of, what is this? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 That's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got a lot of fans out there. I yeah. remember the MCA exhibit for Bowie. It was just so you know, oh, sold yeah. out. Yeah, that was really cool. cool. It's yeah. wonderful. Yep. Thanks, guys. We appreciate Absolutely. it. So their performance is Tuesday, June 27th, the Chicago City Winery. We are getting a performance from yeah. the Metropolitan Jazz Octet coming up.